SpongeBob SquarePants is back. Well, really, he never went anywhere. He's been around since he came into the world of television in 1999, and he was an instant hit. He captured the audiences of the world, really. Whether it was positive or negative, you knew about SpongeBob, and you probably still know he exists. However, if you told me that I'd be playing a SpongeBob game 24 years later, I probably would have laughed directly into your face. The question, though, is, is the Cosmic Shake any good? But before I give you my thoughts, I have to ask, are you ready, kids? I'm ready! Come on, let's save Bikini Bottom from the unintended yet devastating consequences of our own actions! As we've seen a few times in the recent past, an old beloved game was remade in the hopes to gauge interest for more games to be made. And in this case, that was Battle for Bikini Bottom, and they made it in the rehydrated form, and it came out to pretty middling reviews. But it did end up selling well enough that they were able to greenlight SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake. Now, SpongeBob and Patrick are once again up to their lovable antics and discover a magical potion. After they chat with Madame Cassandra, she kind of pretends like it's not a big deal, but then suddenly changes her tune and tells them it's the Mermaid Tears potion, and it will grant the wishes of those who are pure in heart. Of course, in typical Patrick and SpongeBob fashion, they somehow manage to turn Patrick into a balloon and rip apart Bikini Bottom entirely. This sends all the other beloved side characters and the buildings that we know and love from Bikini Bottom into different dimensions or wish worlds. It also releases a ton of cosmic jelly on the Bikini Bottom, and the cosmic jelly takes the form of both a substance you collect as well as creatures that you fight along the way. And of course, SpongeBob and Patrick realize their mistakes and they take off in an effort to fix the world and bring everything back into alignment. Now, the first thing to say is the Cosmic Shake is a platformer through and through. SpongeBob squeakily navigates across the terrain by jumping, gliding, sliding, ground pounding, and even riding a magic surfboard across the wish worlds. And messing up really isn't terribly punishing, which is an aspect of the game that I'll talk about more, but the platforming is actually rather precise. I mean, especially when you consider that you're controlling SpongeBob, who is a sponge, a, a square figure, it takes a little bit of effort to actually land on the platforms you're going for. Patrick, of course, is there. He floats along beside you, you know, since he's a balloon now. And he provides, of course, lots of dialogue and comic relief. Occasionally, he'll give you a hint or something like that, but he's Patrick. You kind of know what to expect from Patrick. But he's not just set dressing either. Uh, the Patrick Balloon also saves you when you fall and allows you to reset your gameplay to a safe point and try again. It's pretty rare to get set back more than a few platforms or spaces, which can be really good for some players, but it does make dying or falling rather inconsequential because you can just pick back up and try again immediately. And you're pretty much in the exact same place. And no matter how many times SpongeBob dies, this happens. So unlike in Battle for Bikini Bottom, where you could play as Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy, in the Cosmic Shake, you play pretty much only as Spongebob. And it does make sense narratively, since Spongebob screwed up the world and needs to be the one to fix it, and Patrick, of course, is a balloon, and Sandy is off somewhere else that you'll find out in the game. But I will admit that in the previous games, it was nice being able to play as the other characters. I mean you have that added dimensionality of the gameplay and the different abilities they bring to the table, and of course getting to know those characters a little better. But I will say that SpongeBob does have the ability to do all the things he needs to do. He can morph into different shapes and acquire different skills, and he's able to complete all the objectives without having to call in any backup. Those objectives include taking out bad guys, and there are a lot of them. Throughout the first world or two, there really isn't a whole lot of variety in the enemy design. You're pretty much fighting the same little jelly guys over and over, and they only take one hit to kill, or at least most of them do. You just hit them with your jellyfish net, poof, they're gone, you get some jelly to pick up, and you move forward. However, as the game progresses, you do start getting introduced to a larger array of enemies with different attacks and ways that you need to defeat them. Some of them still only require one hit, but a lot of them require that you disarm or dodge them first and then hit them a few times. Some of them take two or three hits, some of them take many more, depending on what level you're on. If you can't immediately figure out how to combat them, or if you're trying to get to a certain place while you're platforming, you get these nice little pop-ups that tell you exactly what they need to do. They're pretty simple, to the point, cute to look at, not much to complain about there. Now, even though the gameplay is a lot of fun moment to moment, there is a bit of an interesting lack of challenge to it. 
I mean, there are a few enemies that may hit you a few times and take away some health, and some other more annoying ones will knock you off a cliff from time to time, but by and large, the game is pretty much void of any gameplay challenge. All the enemies do the same amount of damage, no matter how hard their attack is, they'll take away one of your lives or hit points or whatever, and those are signified by pairs of underwear, which function as your health. And the pairs of underwear are pretty much found at any point. I mean, you find them when you defeat a boss if you need them, or if you're really struggling, Patrick will actually float and bring you one in a bubble. So as long as you're being observant, you're pretty much gonna have all the health you need the whole time. Navigating the world can be pretty simple. You have objective markers, which are on by default, but you can also turn them off. And navigation can get a little more difficult if you turn them off. Similarly, you can also get prompts for when you perform certain actions and maneuvers and attacks, which takes a lot of the guess out of the gameplay as well. Now, part of the appeal of a SpongeBob game, at least for me, is that it can appeal to people of all ages. Whether you're an older person, a younger person, a person with lots of background in gaming, a person with no background in gaming, whatever, as long as you're okay with a little bit of obvious humor and some silly voices, SpongeBob is, you know, all right. But the fact that there are no difficulty options at all, at least as far as I could tell, makes it a little bit frustrating for more experienced players. Now, I'm not asking for this game to be the Dark Souls version of SpongeBob or anything. I think developers should make games exactly the way they want to. They shouldn't have to make them have harder versions if they don't want to, and they shouldn't have to make them have easier versions if they don't want to. So if you're a less experienced gamer, this may not bother you. But if you are looking for a challenge, it's probably gonna be hard to find here. Let's move on to the music and the sound. I think it would be a travesty not to at least briefly discuss it, starting with the voice acting. Like all the previous SpongeBob games, pretty much every character is voiced by the people that lent their vocal cords to the characters in the nearly 25 years that the show's been running. This is a licensed game and a game with such iconic voices that we already know and recognize. It just wouldn't feel right if they weren't involved. And it makes it really kind of feel like you're playing an episode of the show. It doesn't take you out of the experience. The music similarly is fantastic and it's tuned to exactly every world that you visit. Now, the worlds are mostly reskinned versions of locations that have been in the show over the years, and whether you're in the Wild West Jellyfish Fields, the Pirate Goo Lagoon, or the Medieval Sulphur Fields, there'll be a soundtrack that accompanies it and makes the world feel alive. And pair this with the unique sound effects of the underwater world of SpongeBob, and that soundtrack pulls the game together, and it really feels like a, a true SpongeBob animated experience. Now, to take a minute to talk about collectibles, we know that collectibles have been a big piece of platformers for years, and they were super important in Battle for Bikini Bottom. In Cosmic Shake, there, of course, are a ton of collectibles. They come in a lot of different forms, but the most important ones are the pieces or globs or whatever of jelly that have invaded the Wish Worlds. And they can be found just hovering above the grounds, they can be found by destroying objects, or if you defeat an enemy, they'll drop some for you. There's some golden spatulas, and there are there are lots of different things. There are Patrick sticky notes. Uh, Squidward needs some refreshments for his cough a little while later. Uh, pretty much any side character you run into is gonna ask you to help find them something. And these do provide a lot of replayability. They'll extend the life of the game if you're someone who really looks forward to getting as high of a completion rate as you can. And the, the jelly and the coins that are collected in the game can be used to unlock new costumes for SpongeBob to wear. But Th that's about all the collectibles do. In order to progress to the next world, all you need to do is complete the world before it. If you don't care about the costumes, and I mean, come on, we love SpongeBob looking just the way he is, there's really no reason to bother with picking up or searching for almost anything at all. Uh, this wouldn't be so bad, but it's in pretty stark contrast to at least Bikini Bottom, because you needed to collect a certain amount of items in order to unlock new areas in the map. And I'm not necessarily opposed to a simple progression system. If you just need to beat the world and move on, that's totally fine. But this game is super easy to progress through. And the collectibles are already there. So just giving a secondary objective to move forward would have been nice. I think that it's pretty clear this is just another step towards making Cosmic Shake more appealing to a wider audience. And that's great, but it may also push some other people who are seeking deeper mechanics a little further away. But hey, if you want to hunt for the different collectibles, even though there's no point other than cosmetics, I think the game does have a lot of replay value past the main story. In fact, 
if you are someone who's looking for all those collectibles, the game makes it really super easy for you. You can go back to a world you've visited previously via the menu, and not only can you choose any world, but you can also choose different points in each one to revisit, and the menu will list out what you may have missed there. They make this available for you during the game, while you're playing, as long as you've visited the world before, and of course, after the main story's over, you can go back as well. So if you're a trophy or an achievement hunter, this is going to come in pretty handy for you. There are also a lot of time trials and puzzles that lead to more collectibles, of course, but those can also extend the life of the game and go back and beat your score in the time trials. So real quick, I wanted to give you guys some details on how I played the game. THQ and their PR teams provided access for me via code. I played the game on PC, mostly using mouse and keyboard, but I did try out the controller and played great on both. Uh, the specs are great for pretty much any modern computer, and the game in 1440 looks absolutely amazing. I will note about the PC version that the mouse and keyboard controls, I did not find a way to remap them. So if you're someone who needs to remap your controls, uh, just know that the mouse and keyboard option does not have that ability. I played on the normal difficulty because there are no difficulty options at all. And the game took me about eight or eight and a half hours. Now with that, I will say early in the game, I was going for pretty much every piece of jelly, every collectible you could find. So if you're someone who's going to do that, you may spend more than eight and a half hours. If you're someone who just wants to play the game and go through all the levels, I would look at less than eight hours probably. So overall, I think SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake is a good game for fans of SpongeBob. Obviously, if you like or love SpongeBob, you'll probably at least like the game. It's basically just the animated series continued in spirit. And if you love the world and the characters, you're probably going to love the moment to moment in the game. Similarly, if you just like simple action platformers a lot, you'll probably find some enjoyment here as well. If you hate SpongeBob, and let's face it, if you do, you probably aren't watching this. I don't really see a whole lot of reason for you to give this game a look. Similarly, if you don't care one way or another about SpongeBob, doesn't bother you, but you also don't love him, but you want some difficulty in your games, you don't want to play an easy game, it, this is probably going to be a big skip for you. I know that things like difficulty can be pretty subjective, but I think that most anybody who needs a gameplay challenge in order to enjoy themselves should stay away. But again, if you fall into that first group and you really like SpongeBob or you don't mind games being super easy, I think Cosmic Shake is a well done game. It's a good pickup. I mean, games are getting more expensive. They're usually 50 or $70, depending on uh, w what size of game it is. And this one comes into the $40 launch price. And I think it's a worthwhile investment if you know exactly what to expect. If you're someone who is looking for a bit more in the way of a challenge, maybe check out this video next.